Today I'll teach you how to return JSON data from controller.edsp.net core MVC. So let's start. First I'll open the startup.cs class. So here I'll be adding some namespaces, newtonsoft.json.serialization. Now let's move to the configure services method. So here I'll be calling the add MVC function. Now here I am calling add JSON options and I'm setting the serializer for the JSON serialization. I'm making use of Newtonsoft JSON serialization in this project. The reason being that the default serializer converts the property names to camel case. For example, if your property name is first name, then when you are accessing the property through Ajax on client side, then it will be changed to small letter first name. Like for example, the capital letter F in the property will be changed to small letter F. So in such cases, it becomes very difficult to actually access the properties. And let's say on server side, you have capital F and on client side, you have small F. So it leads to inconsistency in the code also. So to avoid that, I am using Newton's of JSON serializer which solves this problem and makes it easy to use. So this completes the startup.cs class code. Now I'll be adding a new class to the models folder. I am naming it as person model. Meanwhile, I would like to inform you that if you are unable to understand ESP.NET Core Razor pages, please check out the Hello World tutorial video. The link for the video is available in the description. So here I have added two properties, name and date time. Now I'll add a controller to the project. I am selecting the MVC controller empty option. I'll name the controller as home controller and then I'll click on add. Here I'm adding another controller for handling the jQuery Ajax call. As you can see the return type is JSON result as we are returning a JSON object. Also you will notice that I'm accepting a parameter name and this particular parameter will be sent from the client side using jQuery Ajax. Inside the action method, I am creating an object of person model class. In the name property, I am setting the value of the name parameter. And in the date time property, I am setting the current date time. Finally, I am returning the person model class object after wrapping it inside the JSON function. Now I am decorating this particular action method with HTTP POST attribute as it will be handling the HTTP POST call. Now I am adding a view to the project. I am making use of empty without model template and I am keeping the partial view and layout options as unchecked. Now here I am creating an HTML text box which will accept the name value. Then I am creating a button and when this button is clicked, the jQuery Ajax call will be made to the server side method. So now I have inherited the jQuery minified file and will start writing a jQuery code. So first I am adding the document ready event holder. And inside that, I'll assign a click event handler to the button. Now inside the click event handler, I am calling the jQuery Ajax function. The very first attribute is type and I'm setting it as post. In the data attribute, I am setting the value of the name parameter and the value of the name parameter is fetched from the name text box.
I am displaying the value of the name and also the value of the date time written from the server side action method inside a JavaScript alert message box. The next event handler is to handle failure and here simply the response text is displayed in JavaScript alert message box. In similar way, I am creating an handler for handling error and here also the response text will be displayed in JavaScript alert message box. So with this we complete our programming part and now it's time to run our project and see it in action. So now I'll type in my name in the text box and I'll click on the button. As you can see my name as well as the current date time from the server is being displayed in JavaScript alert message box. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon. Goodbye.